everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS Summit NYC. We're in New York City, been here all day. Lisa Martin, John Furrier, talking with AWS partners, ecosystem folks, customers, AWS folks, you name it. Next up, one of our alumni rejoins us. Please welcome Anshu Sharma, the co-founder and CEO of Skyflow. Anshu, great to have you back on theCUBE. Likewise. I'm excited to be back. So I love how you guys founded this company. Your inspiration was the zero trust data privacy vaults pioneered by two of our favorites, Apple and Netflix. You started with a simple question. What if privacy had an API? So you built a data privacy vault delivered as an API. Talk to us, and it's only in the last three and a half years. Talk to us about a data privacy vault and what's so unique about it. Sure, I think if you think about all the key challenges we are seeing in our personal lives when we're dealing with technology companies, a lot of anxiety is around what happens to my data, right? If you want to go to a pharmacy, they want to know not just your health ID number, but they want to know your social security number, your credit card number, your phone number, and all of that information is actually useful because they need to be able to engage with you. And it's true for hospitals, health systems, it's true for your bank, it's true for pretty much anybody you do business with, even an event like this. But then, question that keeps coming up is where does this data go and how is it protected and the state of the art here has always been to keep kind of keep it protected when it's in storage but almost all the breaches all the hacks happen not because you steal somebody's disk but because someone enters through an API or a portal so the question we asked was we've been building different shapes of containers for different types of data you don't store your logs in a data warehouse. You don't store your analytical data in a regular RDBMS. Similarly, you don't store your passwords and usernames. You store them in identity systems. So if PI is so special, why isn't there a container that's used for storing PII? So that's how the idea of PII world came up. So you guys just got a recent funding, a Series B financing, which means, for the folks out there that don't know the inside baseball, most do, yeah. means you're doing well. It's hard to get that round of funding. It means you're up and growing to the right. What's the differentiator? Why are you guys um, so successful? Why the investment growth? What's the momentum driver? So I think it's, in some ways, we took one of the most complex problems, data privacy. Like half the people can't even describe, like, does data privacy mean like I have to be GDPR compliant or does it actually mean I'm protecting the data? So you have multiple stakeholders in any company. If you're a pharma company, you may have a chief privacy officer, a data officer, this officer, that officer. And all of these people were talking and the answer was buy more tools. So if you look around behind our back, there's probably dozens of companies out there, one protecting data in an API call, another protecting data in a database, another one data warehouse. But as a, as a CEO, CTO, I want to know what happens to my social security number from a customer end to end. So we said, if you can radically simplify the whole thing, and the key insight was you can simplify it by actually isolating and protecting this data. And this architecture evolved on its own at companies like Apple and other places, but it takes dozens of engineers for those companies to build it out. So we're like, well, the pattern makes sense. It logically kind of is just common sense. So instead of selling dozens of tools, we can just give you a very simple product, which is like one API call, you know, protect this data. Like what Stripe is for a plug-in for a financial uh, transaction. You plug it into the app, similar dynamic here, right? Exactly, so Stripe for payments, Twilio for telephony, we have API for everything, but if you have social security numbers or PAN numbers, you still are like relying on DIY. So I think what differentiated us and attracted the investors was, if this works, Every Huge. company needs it. <laughs> well, that's the, the integrations become the key thing. I got to ask you because you mentioned GDPR and all the complexities around the laws and the different regulations. That could be a real blocker and a wet blanket for innovation. Yes. And with the market we're seeing here at it was Summit, New York, small event, 10,000 people, more people here than we're at Snowflake Summit, as an example. And they're the hottest company in data. Yes. So this small little New York event is proven that Thousands that world is growing. So. Why should this wet blanket, these rules, slow it down? How do you balance it? Because that's a concern. If you so, check out all the boxes, you're never actually building anything. So, you know, we just ran into a couple of customers who still are struggling with moving from their data center to AWS Cloud. Now, the fact that here means they want to, 
<laughs> but something is holding them back. I also met the AI team of Amazon. They're doing some amazing work and they're like, the biggest hindrance for them is making customers feel safe when they do the machine learning because now you're opening up the data sets to more people. And in all of those cases, your innovation basically stops because CISO is like, look, you can't put PII in the cloud unprotected. And with a vault architecture, we call it privacy by architecture. Yeah, so yeah. there's a term called privacy by design. I'm <laughs> like, what the, is privacy by design? Right? It's an architecture. <laughs> but if well, you have an architecture, then a developer so, like me was like, I know what architecture is, I don't know what privacy by design so is. So you guys are basically have that architecture by design, which means foundational based yeah. services. So you're providing that as a service, so other people don't have to build the complex. Exactly. You don't have to be Apple's back end team to build out privacy. With you, you get all that benefit. Exactly. And traditionally, people have had to make compromises. If you encrypt the data and secure it, then you can't use it using our proprietary polymorphic encryption technology, you can actually have your cake and eat it too. So what that means for customers is, if you want to protect data in Snowflake or Redshift, yeah. you just use Skyflow with it. We have integrations to databases, to data lakes, all the common workflow tools. Can you give us a customer example that you think really articulates the value of what Skyflow is delivering? Well, I'll give you two examples. One in the FinTech space, one in the health space. So in the FinTech space, there's a company called Nomi Health. They're a large payments processor for the health insurance market. And funnily enough, their CTO actually came from Goldman Sachs. He actually built Apple Card, <laughs> right? That we all have in our phones. <coughs> yeah. And he saw our product and he's like, for my new company, I'm going to just use you guys because I don't want to go hire 20 engineers. So for them, we are a HIPAA compliant environment, a PCI compliant environment, SOC 2 compliant environment and he can sleep better at night because he doesn't have to worry what is my engineer in Poland or Ukraine doing right now. I have a vault, I have rules set up, I can audit it, everything is logged. Similarly for Science 37, they run clinical trials globally. They wanted to solve data residency. So for them the problem was, how do I run one common global instance when the rules say you have to break everything up? And that's very expensive. Okay, so I love I love this. I'm a customer, but I'm a customer. I love it. You, you had me at hello, API <laughs> yeah. integration. I love it. How much does it cost? What's it going to cost me? How do I need to think about my operationalizing? Because I know what an API I can do that. Yes. Am I paying by the usage, by the drink? How do I figure yeah, so out? So we that? have programs for startups where it's really, really inexpensive. We give them credits. And then for enterprises, we basically have a platform fee, and then based on the amount of data, PII, we charge them. We don't nickel and dime the customers, we don't like the usage-based model because you don't know how many times you're going to hit an API. So we usually just based on the number of customer records that you have, and you can hit them as many times as you want. There's no API so unlimited, records, record base, exactly. that's your variable. Exactly, I mean, if you think about you buying Auth0, for example, yeah. for authentication, you pay them by the number of active users you have. So something yeah. similar. So you run on AWS, but you just announced a couple of new GTM partners, MuleSoft and Plaid. Can you talk to us about, start with MuleSoft, what are you doing and why, and the same with Plaid? Sure, I mean, MuleSoft was very uh, interesting. Customers who were adopting our product said, you know, we're buying this product for our new applications, but what about our legacy code? We can't go in there and add APIs there, so, the simplest way to do integration in the legacy world is to use an integration broker. So that's where MuleSoft integration came out and we announced that. Uh, it's a logical place for you to swap out real social security numbers with uh, you know, fake ones. And then we also announced a partnership with Snowflake. Same thing. I think every workload as it's moving to the cloud needs some kind of data protection with it. So I think going forward, we're going to be announcing even more partnerships. So you can imagine all the places you're storing PII today, whether it's in a call center solution or analytic solution, there's a PII story there. Talk about the integration aspect, because I love, I love the momentum. I get everything, make sense of the customers, all these environments. Integrations are super important to plug into. Yes. And then how do I essentially operational on my side? Do I import the records? How do you connect to my environment, my databases? So it's really, really easy. When you encrypt the data and st use Skyflow Vault, we create what is called a format preserving token, which is essentially replacing a social security number with something that looks like an SSN, but it's not. So that there's no schema changes involved. You just have to do that one time swap over. And then in terms of integrations, m most of these integrations are pre-built. 
So Snowflake integration is pre-built, MuSolve integration is pre-built, we're gonna announce some new ones. Uh, so the goal is for off the table in platforms like Snowflake and MuleSoft, we pre-built all the integrations. You can build your own, it takes about like a day. And then in terms of data import, basically it's the same standard process that you would use with any other data store. Data, I've got to ask you about data breaches. Obviously the numbers in 2021 were huge. We're seeing so much change in the cybersecurity landscape, ransomware becoming a household word, a matter of when, but not if. How does Skyflow help organizations protect themselves or reduce the number of breaches so that they are not the next headline? You know, the, the funny thing about breaches is again and again we see people doing the same mistakes, right? So Equifax had a breach four years ago where a customer portal, you know, no customer su support rep should have access to 100 million people's data. Like, is that customer agent really accessing 100 million? But because we've been using legacy security tools, they either give you access or don't give you access. And that's not how it's going to work. Because if I'm going to engage with a pharmacy and airline, they need to be able to use my data in multiple different places. So you need to have fine-grained controls around it. So I think the, the reason we keep getting breaches is cybersecurity industry is selling tens of billions of dollars worth of tools in the name of security, but they cannot be applied at a fine-grained level enough. I can't say things like, for my call center agent that's living in Phoenix, Arizona, they can only verify last four digits, but the same call center worker in Philippines can't even see that. So how do you get all that granular control in place is really why we keep seeing data breaches. So the Equifax breach, the Shopify breach, the Twitter breaches, they're all the same. Like again and again, it's either an inside person or an external person who's gotten in. And once you're in, and this is the whole idea of zero trust as you know, once you're in, you can access all the data. Zero trust means that you don't assume that you actually isolate PII separately. A lot of the cybersecurity issues, as you were talking about, are people-based. Somebody clicking on something or gaining access is, and, and I always talk to security experts about how do you control for the people aspect besides training, awareness, education? Is Skyflow a yes. facilitator of that yes. in a way that we haven't seen before? Yeah, so I think what ends up happening is people, even after they have breaches, they will lock down the system that had the breach but then they have the same data sitting in a partner database, maybe a customer database, maybe a billing system. So by centralizing and isolating PII in one system, you can then put roles-based access control rules. You can put limitations around it, but if you try to do that across hundreds of data bases, you're just not going to be able to do it because it's basically just literally impossible, so. My final question for you is, on, for me is, you're here at AWS Summit, it's 10,000 people, like I said, a lot more people here than some big events, and we're just in New York City, okay? You obviously work with AWS. What's next for you guys as you got the fresh funding, you guys looking for more talent? What's your next uh, mountain you're going to climb? Tell us what's next for the company. Share your vision, put a plug in for the company. Well, it's actually very simple. Today we actually announced that we have a new chief revenue officer who's joining us, uh, Tammy. She's joined us from Launch Darkly, which, is, which grew from like, you know, single digits to like, over nine digits in revenue, and the reason she's joining Skyflow is because she sees the same inflection point hitting us, and for us that means more marketing, more sales, more growth in more geographies, and more partnerships. And we think there's never been a better time to solve privacy. Literally everything that we deal with, even things like Roe v. Wade issues, yeah. eventually ties back into an issue around privacy. <laughs> yes. AWS gets the model, API, you know, come on, right? That's their, that's their model. Exactly, so I think if you look at the largest, best companies that have been built in the last 20 years, they took something that should have been simple but was not. There used to be Avayas of the world selling telephony until Twilio came and said, look, an API. And we are trying to do the same to the entire security, compliance, and privacy industry is to narrow the problem down and solve it once at and for all. At least I have it. We're going to get the Cube API. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Awesome. Anju, thank you for joining us, talking to us about what's new at Skyflow. It sounds like you got that big funding investment, probably lots of strategic innovation about to happen. So you'll have to come back. 
in a few months and maybe yeah. at, at next reinvent in, in six yeah. months and yes. tell us what's new, what's going on. Last, the Cube interview was very well received. People really like the kind of questions you guys ask, so I yeah. love this show. And it's I think great when you're a star like you, you got good market, <laughs> great team, smart, and I mean, look at this. I mean, what slowdown are we talking about here? Yeah, I don't see much. Well, no slowdown, pri not in the enterprise. Privacy is hot and it's incredibly Thank important you. and we're the, only going to be seeing more and more of it. The, you can talk to any CIO, CISO, CTO or the board and they will tell you there is no limit to the budget they have for solving the core privacy issues. Yeah. And make, we love that. that they want to move on to the building. That must make you smile. <laughs> you solve a big problem. Thank you. Awesome, Anshu. Thank you again. Congrats on the momentum and we'll see you next time and hear more on the evolution of Skyflip. We appreciate you. your time. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from New York City at AWS Summit NYC 22. We'll be right back with our next guest, so stick around. <laughs>